what's that gig that's in the back of your head? You're like, I oh, better not forget that. Um, I don't know. Can we can we talk about what we were talking about just off just off air before? About yeah, the, yeah. I mean, you telling me the drive from Pittsburgh to Buffalo for an right. open mic. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty not bad. knowing that you're going to get on. That's hell on earth, right there. And yeah. unless you, unless you look at it in a, in, do you remember there was there was like a half a minute in comedy where like you know the chase of like the open mic and all that stuff, you you felt like that that was us doing our job. You know what I mean? Like you were saying that like you know right. you refer to it as on the road, but technically, you know what I mean for you for, you yeah. know for us at the time that was that is the road and. If you had the time to develop yourself and you didn't feel like you had a gun in the back of your head, it probably right. wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was one of those things. It was a brief moment, I feel like, in my career at least, when like running around to put yourself out there at different open mics in different cities felt meaningful. And it felt you like know? you were doing it and you had your buddies and you were like grabbing a dollar slice and right. fucking then going out and getting fucking drunk, hooking up with somebody or something like that maybe. And yeah. then fucking working a shitty job and then starting all over again the next night. There was there was something it was almost like a badge of honor about being like, oh, we're we're driving all the way. You know, right. we're driving all the way there and all the way back. <laughs> you know, and, and, and just taking our life into our hands. We got two big gulps. This is what we're fucking doing. Get right. in the car. Right. Uh absolutely. There was a moment. And then before that, you're so freaked out, you're trying to get to that. And then after you get that for a little while, like what it was like six, seven months, you're like, oh, what am I doing? Then you're like, right. oh, my God, I'm driving here. I'm driving there. What am I doing? I started when I was 32, too. So I right. never I never really had like uh, like I'm saying, there was probably like a couple of weeks where it was where it felt like, you know, OK, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. It's all right. I have my day job and I'm doing it. It was because, you know, I started so late, like I started in Philly. Um, and I started with like, uh, you know, Chris Cotton, of course, rest in yeah. peace, one of my best friends, uh, Tom Cassidy, another one of my best friends. These, these guys were like fucking 22, 23 years old. I'm right. 33 and they're giving me advice. You know what I mean? Like, right. you got to go here, you got to go there. So there was never any uh, any respite. Um, but we had the Raven in Philly. So we were uh, we were pretty good with that. The idea of a hell gig you know what I mean? I don't have one that I, I can't like come in here and, you know, top whoever has been here before and be like, you know, right. there I was. I was doing it fucking for the Yakuza. They had my ma locked up and they said, hey, one more fat joke and we're slicing her. Uh, I don't really have anything like that, but a series of them. I would say when I first started to understand what a hell gig was, was uh, was a show out in Jersey. OK, before we before we moved up to New York, Um maybe like a year and a half in just when you look back, I stink now, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you look back and you were like, you thought you were fucking funny. Like you, you right. stunk. You know what I mean? Right. Still stink. Uh, but it was, it was on a Sunday afternoon. All right. I'll see if you can guess what, what I was walking into. It was right. a Sunday afternoon, probably around this time of the year. All right. Maybe a couple weeks earlier. Okay. It it was uh it, it was a, a playoff situation. Oh my god, dude! We had we we booked this show for like fifty bucks, um, Sunday at like what has to be a Proud Boys bar now. I would have right. to assume. You know what I mean? Like, there's right. no way. There's no way it's not. There's no way right. it's like a fucking vegan cupcake shop at this point. It had <laughs> to have keep going the other way because it was that they said. A lot of motorcycles, a lot of fucking, you know, shit like that. Right. Um, Eagles playoff game, uh, probably like maybe like a wild card or something like that. Big, 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 big projector. Like never seen a projector like this in my life. Actually, holy shit, this is pretty sweet. It was like a movie screen just yeah. dropped down on this one side of this bar. And, you know, you can always tell how shitty a bar is. Um by kind of how open it is when you first walk in, like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. if, if it's like one, if it's one of the square bars and there's like carpet, it just keeps going back. You're like, ah, this ain't good. Yeah. So it was one of those, man. And um, they had us doing stand up during the fucking commercials, running up there oh and God. fucking doing like two minutes, and you know somebody was hosting and running back and forth. 
And it was, that was when it was like, oh, this is, this is how bad it could get. You know what I mean? Right. And like, looking right. back, that, that wasn't even comedy. You know what I mean? But we, we were so crazy that we thought, if you got to get that room, you got to get them. Yo, don't right. get it. I don't care what's going on. You got to get them. Go up there and get them. So, so stupid. How, yeah, it, comics, especially early on, you're so convinced that there is a way to make it work. You know? <laughs> We're like, no, but the best, like if I was really good, I could get this. And that's wrong. That's well, wrong. It is, but if you don't have that mentality, you, you might not get to the point where you actually can does that make sense right yes exactly because you would quit you would quit instantly yeah so, that's a fucking thing any normal person would walk in i'd be like well you your fucking mind i'm going home this is crazy that wasn't is, even the worst of them you know it's funny it's like like a town like philly you know i'm from pittsburgh and and anybody who knows the two to compare them, if you live in either one, you probably hate that they would ever be compared. But they're very similar <laughs> in the sense that there are certain things you don't compete with. That's you, funny, man. That's it, that's that's trash hating trash. Oh, dude, it they is don't want to be What Pittsburgh? Too, are you out of right. your mind? It's two cities Both that have cities. made their biggest claim to fame sandwiches. That's what they that's what they have uh. wrapped their their sense of purpose up in. They go, we have a sandwich here. Great. And we got a we got a football team. Great. And it's like we did when the Penguins were in the, the playoffs, we did open mics, intermission open mics, where the bar was like you can have the open mic, but you can't do it during the game. So you need to do it during the intermissions. And we thought that was a good idea. We're like, yeah, all right. Well, that seems like a fair enough offer. Let's try to. And literally, if as soon as the game would come back on, they would unplug the microphone. <laughs> that, that's how you These, you the, these are not nurturing people to begin right. with. Right. So you're that in is... that situation and you're like, for you as a young comic, when you're in that situation where people are trying to watch an Eagles game and, and you're, you're going up while there's a Flomax commercial on, are you? <laughs> Which they were pretty have... funny at the time, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you walk into a Mucinex commercial, you're getting your lunch eaten. <laughs> right. Getting yeah, bumped. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got to have a good commercial opening for you. You got to get, I hope it's something that they're warm. Like, it was the crowd, they just give you nothing. They're probably mad that you're there. Yeah, 100%. That, that was that was uh, the first time I ever really saw that like that. And, you know, like saying, like, I didn't even have the mechanics anyway. To I, I didn't have the tools to maybe even crack this open. Right. Um. So you just thought, yeah, not not happy that you were there. And, you know, basically it's like an ambush show situation. Most people don't know. And that's around the time that I started to learn about that. Like when you go to a bar show and you're like, oh, these people had no idea there was going to be a comedy show. Right. But you don't realize that for so long. You just think you stink. And you probably, you know what I mean? You did, but fucking right. crazy. The, the biggest example of that would be, remember when you started to get, you started to get a couple of shows and then you started to realize that when somebody booked you on like a show, like a big show, like something that comes along once every couple of months, now, mm -hmm. obviously people came up different, but it was that one show by the one comic who's also a producer, but they come to you and they pitch this show to you and it doesn't add up to be what it is. That's when you start to see through the, you know, through the lies of a promoter a little bit, you know what I mean? Right. So right. This guy, this guy comes to us. Again, we're young comics, but, you know, we're doing OK, whatever. Um, this guy comes to us and he says, hey, man, listen, would you guys like to perform at an after party for the cast and crew of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? And we're like, what? You, man, oh, my God, of course, man. Be, I'm thinking I'm going to be fucking doing coke with Danny DeVito fucking right. <laughs> right, hanging out. <laughs> so... We get so this is this is at the when I say the height of the it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I mean, I didn't really watch the show that much. Mm -hmm. So there's thousands of people walking around wearing fucking green suits. Those the, the green spandex suits. Right. All right. This is at the height of their fucking fame. They were doing some kind of tour where I don't know what they were doing on stage, 
but they were packing fucking places out and they packed out the the tower theater or whatever it is in mm-hmm. philly um on 69th street i could be wrong what the name is but we get there they're doing a show okay and then after the show there's going to be a big party at this bar which is like down the street called like gallagher's or something like that and then when you look back on that you were like wait a minute is that really the spot that People from Hollywood, from the cast of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, are going to have the after. Yeah, it's at McGurney's down the street with the fucking sternos of roast beef and mashed potatoes and meatballs mixed together for some reason. That's where the fucking Hollywood show after party is going to be. But in our heads, we're like, all right, yeah, cool, we'll do it. And man, not to mention it was paying like 50 bucks. So it's like you would think that maybe FX or Fox might have a little more in the budget to fucking... To, to, to pay some talent right. um, So we get there And it turns out That in between Shows okay in between These huge theater shows I mean Thousands of people like you Would have thought there was like Mardi Gras The way mm-hmm. people were just like milling around The streets all for it's always Sunny In between those shows people were, were Getting drinks at this bar before they went into the theater for, for at 69 Street. I guess that's where like where people go and get all fucked up before they go to concerts over there. Mm-hmm. So this guy fucking pitches this to us and we get there and we're like, ah, it's like in fucking Goodfellas when they walk fucking Joe Pesci into that empty, empty house. Right. It's like, ah, fuck. It's like you think for a second, you're like, yeah, ma, got a show tonight. I'm going out fucking all dressed up, sat there worrying about what you were going to wear. What am I going to open with? Yeah. We get something to eat together. Like you're in a fucking band. You know what I mean? You fucking right, drive right. out there and it's just, it's just people in transient waiting to go to the fucking next show. Oh my God. And this place was about this. It had to be 50 yards by 50 yards. Okay, oh. it was just in this enormous open space with all the lights on, and I don't know, man, fucking four thousand people, literally right. four thousand people in this bar, fuck, just wall till you couldn't get through. No stage, no light, um, a sound system that you know was probably it, it was definitely from a retail audio a visual store you know right. it definitely retail you just wasn't right. rented at fucking you know <laughs> some sound and light place up here in the city it was fucking trash uh, and i'm hosting this was my foray into hosting because i had been hosting and i fucking go up there and i mean just thousands of people talking all right guys maybe you heard you heard like a little bit of silence for like a half a second and then you said something stupid or something that sucks and then just like dude like what the fuck are you doing and then i fight as hard as i can literally i'm up there fucking 10 minutes all right guys come on you guys ready we're gonna get the show started right now just nobody's listening it it was it's like who the fuck like, like if you just walked into the middle of a wedding and just started talking right Bring up the first comic. This is how crazy we were, though. All right. I'm sure you guys were the same, but we were so crazy and we always felt like we were like such the underdogs. And like, this is like really what we wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like, we were, we were in this and taking your licks and taking your lumps and having shitty hell gigs like that. Like, this is, this is the rite of passage. Right. Then you get to a certain point and you look back and you're like, oh, wait, these other guys did it completely different and they're fine. They didn't look at it like it was fucking the, you know, <laughs> the chosen reservoir in Korea. <laughs> Something like 18 men got to die on this trip. <laughs> you know, people don't have to die during the show. <clears throat> but I get off stage. Two of my best friends, uh, Chris Cotton, stand in there mm-hmm. and starts yelling at me. What the fuck, man? What was that? And what was that? I did my, like, nah, man, come on. You could have got him. You could have got him. You could have got him. Of course, he goes up fucking two minutes later. Boom, 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 boom. You know, he's fucking right. knocked out of the box. Uh, that was a true hell gig. And then the, you still learn things, though, from him. Because afterwards, I, I came up to the Laugh House. So that's, kind of, that's, that's where I started. And, um, you know, Black Comics, they always emphasized 
to me, make sure you get your money that night. Always get your money that night. Get your money that night. Never don't let anybody fuck you over. Get your money, get your money, get your money, get your money, get your money. And it served me well because after it, uh, this kid didn't want to pay us. He was, he had clearly embellished what the show was going to be. Okay. To make it seem like it was bigger than it was. Um, right. and he was a music act. He was, he, he, he played guitar. So he actually, for like maybe a couple, he stunk, but maybe for a couple of minutes, he got their attention and he had like his thing and he had like a couple people there and yada, yada, yada. But it was clear that after the show, he had uh, procured some, um, how do I put this delicately? Some uh, post-show vitamins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The, The nasal kind. This kid was yacked up. All right, Kali. Let's quit screwing around. The kid was on the fucking was, was on the Colombian goods. He was coked out of the gills. And you could see it on his face. You know, it was, this was like a big thing. This is working out for him. He had a couple of beers, got a bag. Yeah. Didn't really have the money to fucking pass now, obviously. So he comes out and we're standing out there in a circle. And he's like, I, he's like, I don't got it, man. And, you know, like you're like, well, you, right. you do, but it's in a different form right now. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm okay with it. Um, right. <laughs> oh, we take checks, <laughs> Visa or Mastercard. <laughs> so he tries to not pay us, and it's 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 like me, Cotton, and it was me, Cotton, and and, and there was a there was another comic there who was like a little intimidated by this guy, but we didn't give a fuck because we had just went through that, and we were like, I don't fucking like, I'll fight you now. Right. You know what I mean? I already got the shit kicked out of me in there. I can't feel any. I'll fight you. Let's fight. Right. You can beat me up. I don't care, but I'm we're, something's happening. Yeah. And fucking just we stand there. We just bash him. We're like, come on, man. Just give us the fucking money. Give us the money. Give us. And finally, he's like, fine, man. He throws it on the ground and walks away. Throws the money on the ground, like crumpled up. After that, that wasn't going to that wasn't going to fly. Cotton fucking just as he's like trying to go back inside, just grabs him by the shoulder. He's like, pick that fucking money up and hand it to us. He picks it up and hands it to us. We're fucking back in Philly. Crazy, dude, that's insane. That's nuts. And there's so many points in that show where you a, a, a regular minded person would go. We should just leave. We should just leave. We shouldn't be here. This is ridiculous. No, we should we should go. We should go. We should not be here. The best part about it is is that idea that you hear they go, Hey, we're doing a show for the cast of Always Sunny. Right. And the first thing that's probably going through your head is like, Well, they're gonna love me. Oh like, you know, they're gonna probably write me. me in. Probably, they're probably gonna re- they're probably gonna take me back on their private jet that night. Right. I'll probably move in with Danny DeVito. I would assume that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, it, right. it's they're gonna love me. That that high and low that quickly turns is so it's so specific to stand up. I feel like because. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're starting, you really do take people at their word, <laughs> which, which is a you mistake. believe the flyer. You know what I mean? Right, Holy right. shit! Comedy extravaganza. I didn't right. know, it's, Mom. It's gonna be a spectacular. There's 14 comics on the show. It must be good. <laughs> you know, they all have this their is, own headshots. This is hard copy flyer right here. This is fucking. This is postcard thickness. This guy's got lie. money. Oh my god! I remember someone asked me to do when I first started in Indiana, Pennsylvania, which is a couple hours uh, east of Pittsburgh. They called and they said, "Hey, we're doing a pre-show, very similar." They go, "We're doing the warm-up show, the warm-up show, very business terms, you know, showbiz terms." Uh, for <laughs> for Amy Schumer, she's performing at the convention center and in, in at IUP at the College of Fear. Okay, you like to be a part of it? And I was like, "Oh my god, I." Uh, yeah, you know, I have something else, but I can I can cancel it. And they're like, all right, yeah, you know, it's going to be you, me, and this person, and this person's hosting, and, and we're doing the warm-up for Amy Schumer. And I was like, oh, my, this is, like, huge, right? And I, um, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I can't believe this. And then I get the details, and it's like, well, the show is not at the convention center, right? <laughs> and then you go, and you realize- Must have shuttle buses. Show- right, right. They- <laughs> so it must be it must, it must be like Disney, where they're driving underground, you know? You're like- still trying to believe it? Oh, it's like a tour. All right, that's pretty good. 
<laughs> right, right. It must be right next door. Now, will we fly on the helicopters from venue to venue? Is that how we're right. going to do it? <laughs> right. I'm like, do you need, do you need like a, uh, like a W-2? So, you know, we're to send a check. You know, like, right? so, so we get to IUP and the guy that books it and the, the, the guy that called is like, obviously we're not opening for Amy Schumer and we're just in a bar that they like tried to paper around the city as like, Hey, before you go see Amy Schumer, come to this show. Yeah. They were just trying to ride the coattails of a better show. Yeah. Before. Did it and work? You, no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> Schumer's there. Dinner, right? <laughs> before, you know, having dinner and, and getting cocktails. They're not in some <laughs> dive bar being like, you know what we need before we see this seasoned professional comic. We need four homeless guys to come up here <laughs> and talk about dating. That's I, need a, I need a poli sci major who's flunking out <laughs> to come up here and tell me his opinions on the world. I need him to go up here and do his best Louis C.K. That's, that's what right. I need. <laughs> it was brutal. It's insane. So when you're in that moment, you you just think that like it's almost like you don't even have time to process it. You know, at least that's how it felt for me. Well, yeah, where... I think I think that you put it you put it very good when you said when you go from that high to that low. I think when that happens to a human being, something does snap inside of them, and they almost if you want something bad enough, something snaps inside of you, and it almost creates like a little tear in the fabric of space time. And you just step through that. So right. anything else for the rest of the night, no matter how crazy it is, you're 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 not going to really process it until you're in the car on the way home. And whatever it is, you're going to do it. If they say dance, you're going to dance. Right. You know what I mean? You're right. there. You're in it. Fuck it. Let's go. Yeah. It, it's one of those things where in your head, you're like, I have to find anything that will get their attention. And then that's what I'm doing for the rest of the show. <laughs> You know, I don't know if it's going to be a voice or if it's going to be crowd work. <laughs> you make the mistake of doing, you start to do crowd work and you realize you're not very good at it. Do you ever have that? <laughs> where, you're uh, like, where are you, sir? Are you having dinner tonight? Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had one of our buddies one time. We took one of our buddies who's a couple of years behind us uh, to open up for us um, in Poughkeepsie. And, uh, a lot of us, we host in the city a lot. You know, I host, I yeah. host it in the city a lot. And when you're in the city, it's different because it's, you know, not that you're doing, Hey, where you're from, but people are from all over. Right. But when, before he got up there, we were like, dude, when you're hosting, don't ask them where they're from. They're all from here. Right. right. That's why they're here. They're here because they live here and they're coming to see us. You know? Right. <laughs> as soon as he gets up there. Hey, this is where are you guys from? The guy's like, I'm from Poughkeepsie. You, you came to me. What are you talking yeah, right. about? I'm in my local bar. What do you think? I'm traveling through? What am I, Who a steel in? salesman? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my God. And that that feeling of it, it it's like you walked onto a trap door and it releases and there's nothing under you. You oh, know, we're like, I am free falling up <laughs> yeah. here. There you is think no you're better parachute. at crowd work than you are when you realize you're stinking crowd work doing crowd work. All right, really? That's cool. All right, good stuff. <laughs> you're like, like I see other people do this. I don't know what the difference is. You know? Quick, you ladies, say something funny. We're tanking over here. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you Who's guys drinking? Playing? <laughs> right. Who's drinking? Oh, man, that is garbage. That's that's my favorite. Who's drinking? And then I love the other one, which has become very popular. Is who smokes weed? It's like, yeah. what year do you think this is? What? Mm. It, you might as well you might as well ask like, who doesn't smoke weed? Who do, who's sober? You'd 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 be more you'd get more out of that. Yeah, um, Kevin Ryan and I were walking by. Uh, we were walking in Midtown on Sunday, and we walked by this guy near where our studio is, and. He was like an older dude, you know, like an old head. And he was smoking a joint. And as we walked by him, he's like, oh, shit, I thought you guys were the cops. We're like, that, dude, what, what, are you, what is this? Fucking 98? Nobody cares. Right. You're fucking right. giving it away in doctor's offices. As far as I'm concerned, right. it's fucking legal. Right. Smoke away. Oh, my God. It's insane. It's Some people are so, <clears throat> they're so ingrained in that culture whether it be comedy or, or culture itself 
that they can't get out of it. They just can't no. shake themselves out of it. You know, mm -mm. You, you love, I love seeing like an old comic who just, cause there's some older comics that you have to respect cause they've just made it through it. The fact that they're still doing it, you're like, well, you've obviously beat time. You know, mm -hmm. it, the fact that this doesn't kill you is really impressive. And some people adapt and stuff. And then you get some, you see some, like, you know, the old, older comics where they're like, they go up on stage and like, what's going on with rap music today? You know, and you're like, you're talking please. about the unsuccessful older comics is what you're right. saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, pull it, pull the plug. Cause I know where this is going, you know? It stopped writing in 99. What's up yeah. with rap music? Today? Right. What's with all the cursing and rap music? Huh? <laughs> you guys on this Tic Tac? Huh? What the fuck is that all about? Oh my God. What uh, What do you think as far as, like, have you had this where the show, you have an audience that's, uh, maybe they're a little rowdy, right? They're a little chatty. And you, you start to, as the show goes on, you start to get in your head. You're like, I'm going to be the person that sets them straight. Like, I'm going to have, like, my Bill Burr Philly moment. Mm -hmm. And then you get up there and you're super aggressive mm -hmm. and you realize, oh shit, this is, they're just, they did not need this. I'm coming out swinging at these. Sure. Things. Sure. A hundred percent. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I don't even get that far. Like, yeah, I have done that where I've done that where I, I thought the crowd was worse than they were. Right. You right. know what I mean? That, that's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. And you yes. come in all like tough guy. And then one person says something and you're like, you shut them down. Well, here's the thing with me. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm not doing anything heavy. I'm doing fat guy jokes. I'm making fun right. of myself. You know, I'm talking about how my girlfriend can't stand me and, you know, lovable loser kind of stuff. Right. So I go up there like a fucking, you know, like a big fat clown. And then I've had moments, just honest reaction moments. You know what I mean? Normally, you know, especially, Again, host a lot. You know what I mean? So you can't ruin the show hosting. You know what right. I mean? So you have to, all right, guys, come on. You know, let's settle down. You know, we got, a, we got a great show for you. I don't want anybody getting kicked out, blah, blah, blah. You can do that stuff. But right. if there's like, you know, a bigger comic on the show and like he, they leave and they're like, oh, what the fuck? You know, and then in my crazy head, I'm like, oh, they think I suck because the show sucks. Then I get mad. If I go back up there and like when I snap, not like, you know, I'll fucking kill every one of you. But when I break that fat guy, funny character, it's right. really hard for me to come back. Yeah. Cause it'll, cause it'll right. be, it'll, it'll go from like, you know, it'll just, it's just a switch will happen. Like, Hey man, you want to shut the fuck up? You're fucking ruining their, like, it'll just drop like that. And then I can't go back to fucking, you know, so I work out a plan of fitness. Ugh. I mean, <laughs> even if they hate them, right. you know what I mean? They they're still looking at me like, all right. Yeah. We don't like this guy, but I, this guy's fucking crazy because he was fucking having a great time and, and, you know, Joey fun time a minute ago. And then he fucking turns into fucking Henry portrait of a serial killer real quick on stage. So it's fucking it, 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 it's tough. And I've had that. I've had that go real wrong. We kind of came up through the village lantern when we got up here. We, we you know, we grinded it out in the village for for three or four years. And, um, you know, that was a that was a great education as far as, you know, having a huge cross section of people and all that stuff. Um, but one night fucking, you know, just when it gets too much, you know, what I mean, sometimes it's too much. And right. You just have an honest reaction on stage. There was this lady who I didn't see her come in or anything like that. So I didn't really know 100 percent what I was walking into. But I know everybody was coming off stage like it's fucking lady, man, it's fucking lady. You know what I mean? And it was. You know, like probably like the third show of the night, we barked all these people in, fucking getting our dicks kicked in all fucking week. It was like a Friday night or something like that. Right. <clears throat> so I go up. So I'm thinking I'm going to be that guy, like what you're talking about. Right. You know, I'm going right. to go up and fucking straighten them out. I'm going to get the show back on track. Meanwhile, there's like two more comics. So who gives a shit? So I go up there and not listen. I am. I am clearly saying this is no matter what she said or what she did. This was not, where's the camera? This was not the proper reaction, but it was just organic and it was natural and I shouldn't have said it, but I fucking said it. And I hear this, I go, hey, everybody, how you doing? And I hear this voice go, we're waiting for you to make us laugh. That's what she says. And I go, well, how about you suck my dick? 
That just comes out of my mouth. <laughs> Which in hindsight might have been a little harsh for the situation. And some of the intelligence I was receiving from comics off stage might have had to do more with their um, performance than the audience. So there was a collective. Oh, there was a and there was it was probably like 30 people in there. There was a huge gasp. Then I hear this other voice in the darkness go, yo, man, you can't talk to my fucking mother like that. <laughs> so where are you from, sir? <laughs> oh, my God. This guy was there with his mom. I think it was around Mother's Day, to be honest with you. Now that I oh piece it all together. God. Yeah. So this guy freaks the fuck out. He never, yeah. he never, he never charges me on stage or anything like that. So we deal with this. He, so then all of a sudden security came in and they were throwing them out and I was keeping my mouth shut. But like the guy was like, he fucking told my mom to suck his dick. And I'll make sure well, I fucking ask you not to talk about it. Back and forth, whatever, whatever, whatever. So they leave. I bomb for the rest of my fucking set, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then I get off and that's it. And as I'm going to leave, okay, the security guard comes downstairs and he's like, he's like, and this was the Saturday security guy. We don't get security on Sunday through fucking Thursday. Right. So, yeah, this is it. The fucking walls are coming down tonight. So he goes, hey, man, I wouldn't go out there. That guy said he was going to shoot you. <laughs> you know, just like that. Normal he said, stuff. He didn't say, he didn't say, and what would, what caught my attention as, as I was putting on my, my winter coat and hat <laughs> ready to, to move along about my day was the fact that he said it's so dry and that he was so, he said he was going to shoot you. Didn't say he's going to fuck you up. Didn't say he's going to beat your ass. Didn't say I'll fucking kick that. My, 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 my. He said he's going to shoot you. The guy said he was going to shoot you if he saw you. Right. And that's not something that people usually just say <laughs> off the cuff. Not something people usually say at dinner, okay? On Mother's Day. That's not usual yeah. Mother's Day threats, all right? If, he, if he's willing to shoot someone on Mother's Day, he must mean it. In front know? of his mother. Right, yeah. right. How was that's the show? How was the show? So... <laughs> I wish it ended there and it doesn't end in, in there's not a big ending to the story. It's just uh, a little bit of a cautionary tale, I would say, um, because most people, when somebody says, you know, even that, even as specific as that was, most of the times when somebody says they're going to shoot you, all right, this is through 42 years of being a, or 44 years of being a dirt ball. Uh, mm -hmm. um, in my, in my uh, encounters, if somebody says they're going to do something to you, they're not, it's the one that doesn't say anything to you. That's usually going to do it. Okay. Right. Right. So fast forward to uh, Wednesday of that week. It's been about five days. All right. Wednesday of that week, we're doing a show, same place down there again. And we used to, uh, they would have the barkers in like a radius around the club, obviously. So we had this one guy, uh, great buddy of mine, funny guy, Paul, Paul, Paul Bennett was on the corner, but he's, you know, not green. But he was, you know, he's very uh, trusting and like he's just a sweet, great guy, sweet, mm -hmm. great guy. All right. Tall, sweet, great guy. Shout out to Paulie, Paulie Bennett's. Um, uh, comes just slowly, casually walking down the street. OK, after maybe barking for like an hour, I just happened to pop up to have a cigarette. And he's like, I was like, he's like, oh, hey, did you see that guy? And I'm like, did I see what guy? And he was like. There was a guy who walked up to me and said, hey, is the fat guy working tonight? I got to talk to him about something. And Paul, <laughs> you know, he didn't know. <laughs> but he never showed up. But it was the same guy. Oh, my God. Yeah. You, you got lucky there, brother. Got lucky. If you, if you say you're going to shoot somebody and then five days later come back, there's a good chance you're going to shoot somebody. So I don't know right. if he... Chickened out at the last second if, you know, he kept walking or didn't see me or what. But I looked over my shoulder on the low for probably a year and a half after that. 
after that yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny you should say that. Go ahead and come on in uh, <laughs> to the door, sir. <laughs> we just had that guy come in and shoot you. Right behind, he comes in behind me. My right. girlfriend's involved. There yeah. he is. It's like the Ellen show, but instead of her surprising you, it's just the guy that's wanted to kill you. Yeah, it's not a guy in a Spider-Man, not some actor, some Hollywood actor trying to get his uh, SAG credits in a, in a Spider-Man outfit. It's fucking right. some dude right. looking for payback. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, let me ask you this before we get out of here. I Shoot. love to ask. I love to ask comics this question to see where all the similarities and differences are. Bad show. You have a bad show. It doesn't go well. You feel like shit. What is the vice ritual thing, food, drink, person that you call that gets you out of that place? What do you do? Uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty dysfunctional as far as like a person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? To be honest with you, I don't really have a lot of good uh, mecha, uh, coping skills inside myself. Um, Obviously, I abuse everything. You know what I mean? I, 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 right. You know, I don't know when too many slices of pizza is enough. Take that to the extreme on any any platform. Um, right. So nothing ever really made me feel better. And that is that that, you know, I, I still don't have the, you know, the equipment to really, you know, brush that off and move on to the next one. Even now, you know what I mean? Right. Even now it's worse because you're like, wait, I thought I someone had this figured out. And you're just like, yeah, fucking two by two to the face and you're just like she you feel like an asshole for being confident um, yeah yeah that's brutal yeah that's so brutal. the only thing that cures that is the next set whenever that yeah. is you're gonna feel that way i've always felt that way you know and everybody says the same thing and you say the same thing to other people like, ah, i wasn't that bad it was great and it probably wasn't because you don't really right. give a shit about you know you're not you're not hyper focused on you know, even your best and best and best of friends as you are on you, you're going to make it much harder on yourself. And you right. think this is the end of the world. So, you know, people saying it to you doesn't really do anything. You know what I mean? There, you know, there's not like, you know, a phone call like, Hey, had a bad shit again. You know what I mean? No, it's, you know, you, you do, you, you fill your body with toxins and fucking everything else you can get your hands on that night, you know, or you just go home then I right. say you don't want to drink. That's when it's bad. When you're like, it was yeah. so bad. You're like, nah, I'm just going to go home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, shit. But nothing changes until you get a good set in. That's it. Yeah, it's it's that uh, that ride home. I <clears throat> was happy when I bought a car in this city because when I first moved here and you would go to a bad open mic or a bad show or you'd go to it. The worst was when you go to an open mic and you didn't even get up. And then you have to get on a subway and go home. And you're like, what? I remember getting on the wrong subway after a bad show and being like, calling my roommate and be like, you might as well just pack my stuff up for me because I am going back to Pittsburgh tonight. You know, at least now I have a car and it's like, well, I'm in my own space. I can drive home. But uh, five years. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's just the longest moment of your night. Yeah, it's crazy. The five years in Philly, like I, we were saying in the beginning of the pod, that, you know, there was there was a little bit of cushiness to that, to a degree, but there is nothing. And I, dude, honestly, man, there is nothing that I would want to do over less than the first three years up here. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, it is fucking, especially like you know, what? what do you remember when when, when did you get into the city? I moved here. Um in september about i guess it, we're coming up on this would be two two and a half years ago now okay all right yeah so so you like in this modern age or whatever it is whatever the fuck you want to call it i mean it ain't the 90s you know what i mean you feel like it was right. the 90s it'd be you know what i mean man just like the village and the subway and fucking waiting at west fourth street until fucking two in the morning to fucking get home after maybe not getting up on an open mic trudging right. around to those new york open mics fucking far out brooklyn queens fucking early one at fucking uh what mcsweeney's or whatever it is fucking behind a pool table dude there is there is i can't imagine anything in the entertainment business more demoralizing, more fucking, you know, weeding out the, the week than that, than fucking right. a, new, a New York open mic routine. 
unless your parents are rich and you don't got to work a day job and earn something like that. You know what I mean? Right. I, I'm sure there's exceptions. Well, I just focus on my comedy. But when you're like hanging on, like when you said you're hanging on by a thread, like I'm moving back to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I remember Reggie Conquest uh, had a really good, um, had a really good thought. Somebody lost their uh, Metro card, lost their monthly Metro card. And I remember Reggie saying, if I lose my Metro card, I'm moving home. Like that's how, that's, yeah. that's how razor thin, you know, right. and you're like kind of leaving it places just to like, you're like putting it down, like hoping someone picks it up. No, but I'm just like, you wouldn't be able to replace it. Like if I lose this, this, this is, you know what I mean? This is, I'm going, I have nothing. I'm going home. Right. Yeah, you you are just you feel like every day you're on the ledge, you know, and uh, until that, until you start to back off that a little bit, it yeah. is just every day's a war. Now, granted, when you look back on it, or I'm sure to other people, it's like people are like you know quit bitching, you know what I right. mean? We right. do like to do that as comics, you know. We like oh, for sure. We we like to bitch and we like to complain, you know yeah. what I mean? So, right. It's it's the only thing I think you can do. So you can somewhat, uh, somewhat justify like this, this crazy life a little bit that yeah. you're like, well, at least I, I can, I know when it's bad mm -hmm. or bad. And you want people, you want people to think we're like gunfighters and stuff like that. Like you don't know. Or like, right. It's like, all right, relax. You were at a bar in Jersey. You stink. What do you want? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I do love that when comics, they get like real intense, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah. I've given everything to this. It's like everything. <laughs> everything. Given everything. Like, <laughs> you have no responsibilities. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, why your grandfather who laid brick for 45 years right, yeah. put you 12 kids through college. Right. His fingers are all fucking twisted up. You can't, I gave everything to this. Right. <laughs> Just chewed me up and spit oh, me out. That's too uh, funny. Man, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Buddy, thank Such you. a blast. Yeah, tell people where to find you, where to hear you. Uh, we got uh, at H Foley on Ice on Twitter, Foley Grams on Instagram. Um, I'm one half of, uh, of Are You Garbage, which is a really fun podcast where we sit down with your favorite comedians and we determine how they grew up, if they grow trashy or if they're, if they're classy. Um, we got a YouTube page for that. And anywhere you get your podcast, you can find Are You Garbage. Um, that's pretty much pretty much it, man. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you for doing this, brother. I really appreciate it. Buddy, I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you soon, Colin.